Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Um, dum, 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 la, 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 la. Look at that sky, Mom. Isn't it beautiful? You look where you're driving. I can look at both, thank you. The sky is so soft after a rain. There was almost a rainbow, do you notice? Mama, say something. All I can say is David must be worried sick. I'm going as fast as the speed limit will let me. That is not what I meant. And I feel fine. I don't see what driving has to do with having a baby in the first place. That is still not what I mean. Then you're speaking in riddles, Mama. I'm not speaking hardly at all. Go on, speak. Make yourself at home. It's a free country. All I can say is that David expected you... Us? ...back home in five minutes. And we've been gone nearly an hour. It's almost seven o'clock. Still light as day out. David knows Gertrude lives just two miles down the road, and it's only five minutes to take her home. I suppose it's still so light because this is the longest day of the year, Mama. This was also the longest five minutes of the year. Now stop worrying. David was just about to take a shower when we left home. He forgets everything, including the time when he's in the shower. I should know better. What's the use of arguing with you? No use at all. Besides, who's arguing? We're discussing. Oh. And that's healthy. When a mother and a daughter can discuss things, it's healthy. Who told you? Everybody knows it. Even psychologists. Well, then, if it's so healthy, tell me, why did we have to drive all the way down just tonight to the hothouse for a few flowers? You were along, Mama, so you can't blame me. You know I'm helpless when you've made your mind up. That is the sweetest thing you've said to me in ten minutes. You have not answered my question, Claudia. Why the flowers just tonight? I felt like flowers just tonight, Mama. Aren't they lovely? They are. Mm. I think I like the snapdragons best. But that has nothing to do with this clandestine drive through the country behind David's back. I intend to tell David's back just where we've been. I have to explain the flowers anyway. Besides which, it's all his fault in the first place. His fault? Certainly his fault. If he decided to let me plant a flower garden, I wouldn't have to go tooting around the country buying them. Poor David. He gets blamed for everything. Living in the country isn't living in the country without a flower garden. What is it, then? I might just as well be back in New York. Except, of course, it's easier to buy flowers up here. Well, I'm glad you found some benefits. I think I will put my cards on the table, Mama, as soon as I get home. Then you better start shuffling them, because here we are. You agree with me, don't you? Certainly. Hmm. Agree to what? You are a traitor. I can't depend on you for anything, not even a two-by-four flower garden. Just one question, Claudia. Who do you expect to get as your flower gardener? What's the matter with me? Nothing that the birth of an eight-pound son won't cure. But for the time being, you don't look like much of a gardener. You know, that eight-pound son was David's excuse in the first place. And he certainly won't change his mind now. No, but I can start working on it. A man's mind, Mama, needs a lot of working on. Speak Solomon's wife. Well, here we are. Mm -hmm. Now to explain our absence to your husband. Mama, honestly. You make David sound like a monster. I wouldn't blame him if he acted like one. You don't see him pacing up and down, do you? So far, so good. You just tell him that you felt like having some flowers, Mama. Me? Yes, David wouldn't deny you anything. Do you see him? Not in the front hall. This is awfully quiet, isn't it? Here, give me the flowers. I'll put them in a vase in the kitchen. You will not. You talk to David while I do it. Coward. Not at all. I love arranging flowers. I'm terrible at it. Mama, I don't hear David any place. He's giving us the silent treatment. Oh. Well, just so his lips haven't turned white, I can cope with him. I wish he'd come down. I'm going to get supper on. This is your funeral. Mama. Uh-oh. Here he comes. His footsteps sound as if he's been worrying. Probably imagines us tangled up in a car accident. Poor David. Poor us. We aren't. From the halls of Montezuma to the shores of a triple. Mama, he's singing. How angry can he be? Uh, hello, Your you father two. always sang when he was angry. Hello, David. Hello. You've been awfully quiet. Anything wrong? Anything wrong? Anything wrong? Yeah, not a sound around this house for the last half hour. What, you, what have you been doing? Mm, nothing. Well, that's usual, but thanks anyway. What for? For the unaccustomed peace and quiet. Is that all you have to say to me? 
Darling, is anything the matter? Everything is the matter, isn't it, Mama? I don't blame you for being angry, Claudia. What's, uh, what's going on here? Oh, you, 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 you man, haven't you even missed us? I missed a few interruptions and idea questions, yes, but that's all. Have you been gone? Listen to him, Mama. Have we been gone? Yes, we've been gone. Mama and I have been out gallivanting around the countryside. Really? He doesn't really? believe us, Claudia. Did you have a nice ride? Lovely, thank you, lovely. I drove. Oh, that's nice. He still doesn't believe us. I don't care so much about his not believing us, but I do care that he didn't even miss us. <laughs> <laughs> I would even have preferred your being furious that I was driving the car around without telling you instead of this, 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 this indifference. There is no pleasing her, Mother. See? It was something of a letdown, David. Both Claudia and I had our claws sharpened for the fray. Really? Well, since there are no fireworks to watch, I'll get supper going. Come on, darling. Kiss me and forgive my good humor and tell me where you've been. Where do you think I got these? These flowers I am holding. Plucked them right out of the sky. Very funny. I bought them at the sunny side hot houses. The sunny the side hot houses? Yes. You know, down by Eastbrook Center. Well, David, what is the matter? I thought you weren't supposed to go driving around the country. I'm not, but a minute the ago. Hot you... houses are miles away. If I don't keep my, my eye on you every single day. David, second, David. If I go in and take a simple shower and come out to find that you've Hopped in the car and taken off against everybody's warning. You'd never have known if I hadn't told you. You didn't even miss That's me. nothing to do with it. You ought to be spanked. Oh, darling, for a while I thought you didn't care. No, I sometimes wish I didn't. Does complicate life, doesn't it? That's a masterpiece of understatement. Oh, you flatterer. <laughs> David, darling, if we had our own flower garden, I wouldn't have to drive around buying them. Don't you really think we ought to raise some flowers? We're going to raise a sun. That's enough for you for one season. We're raising vegetables. And vegetables are first the law of the land, darling. Let's go outside to talk. Dinner's not for a while. Laws, laws, laws. Who made the law? The rugged New Englanders who first planted this land. They... They planted their vittles first. Our vittles are planted. And how I let you talk me into it, I'll never know. You mean you admit you're not a rugged New Englander? I certainly do. You can buy vegetables at one-third of the price that we raise them. David, did you ever taste better asparagus or rhubarb or scallions than ours? They ought to be good. Each carrot is worth at least a, a dollar. Well, they're certainly worth it. Well, what kind of higher mathematics do you use to figure that? It's simple. They're ours. I thought, I thought you were the young woman who couldn't eat anything she could look at in the eye. I am. That's why we haven't planted potatoes. Oh, oh. <laughs> Darling, you have no real objections to my having a flower garden, have you? I have a great many objections to one this year. I'm, I'm not going to have you doing it, that's all. These last few months, the, the doctor wouldn't have allowed it. And the next few months, I won't allow it. Besides... You'll be entirely too busy. Then it's not the flowers you object to, it's me. Well, if you want to put it that way. I think a flower garden is a pretty nice thing to have. But don't fool yourself, it's not so simple. It takes a great deal of work and the plot has to be prepared in space. Oh, I love the work. It's work that shows, not just eaten and gone. Morning glories, marigolds, petunias, chrysanthemums, larkspur. The place will be beautiful. We'll have a flower garden, darling, next summer. We'll start preparing that patch of land this fall. We'll have to pick just the right spot, David. Mm, very important. Mm. We'll have to have the soil enriched and plant some of the bulbs and roots so they can be ready to come up in the spring. How do you know so much? Oh, everybody does. Not I. I don't know nothing. Uh, you, you, you're you, a little city girl. But with country ambitions. Uh, and that makes up for a lot of ignorance. Uh, I better had. <laughs> oh, darling. You never act half as bad as you sound, do you? And what does that mean? I mean, at half the time you talk like a man, you don't really feel like one, do you? There's nothing unmanly about liking a few flowers. Of course not. It's just un-New england un-forefatherly. But our ancestors won't feel so bad, seeing as we did plant our vittles a whole year first. Now, I'm not amused. Now, come on, let's go back into the house. Supper all must be ready. It's a roast. We've got plenty of time. Let's find the right place of land for our garden this minute. Why? Well, besides wanting to beat you while you're hot, I want to have a chance to think of it. <laughs> but where do you think? Well, first we want a flat piece of ground where the soil goes pretty deep without rocks or stones. Oh, 
Now, let's see. Um, how about behind the barn? It's flat there. Not bad. As a matter of fact, a few weeks ago, I, I noticed a nice privet hedge growing there. And it's a nice private place for a nice privet hedge. <laughs> oh, now, wait a minute, darling. We don't have to run. It's not going to disappear. Today is, David. It's starting to get dark. And we'll see it in the morning. Nothing doing. I want to see it now. We're almost Hey, here. careful. Some loose stones on this wall. Is that the hedge? That little green row of stuff? Mm, spoken like a true horticulturist, yes. <laughs> I like privet hedge, even before I knew what it was. Now, you know. Let's go back in the house. David, I want to see it close up. What's the hurry? No hurry. I'm just dying of hunger. Good. Now. Say, it grows pretty high, doesn't it? Just about average. Oh, you, you're so blasé. Now, come on, come on. You've seen it. I'm hungrier. David, do you see what I see? Hmm? Look, there, see inside the square of hedge. Practically hidden. David, it's a garden of flowers. Well, what do you know? It must be a secret garden. Look, there are cornflowers and delphinium, a few violets, some daisies, and... What's that one in the corner? Mm. This is a very old-fashioned garden. Somebody must have planted it. Do these flowers come up by themselves? No, these are all perennials, but they... Must have been planted by someone in the first place. Whoever it was who did it, darling, did it in secret. Even I have never even noticed it before. I guess some poor mother of ours wasn't interested in raising vittles, David. I suppose every woman needs a secret. Not a secret, darling. Just a corner of something beautiful and fresh and godly. Something that's worked on and grows only for beauty and pleasure. Not because you need. Well, it looks like we have a garden now. We're lucky we have it without any work. All for gratis. Only I... Only what? I'd rather our garden not be secret. I'd rather plant it right out in the open, side by side with our vittles. Wouldn't you? Claudia, Claudia, quite contrary. How does your garden grow? Any parties on your social calendar or meetings for which you have to plan refreshments? If so, just keep in mind that the simplest and least expensive menus are usually built around Coca-Cola. Everybody enjoys the pause that refreshes, and it takes so little preparation to serve Coke. All you have to do is to be sure it's ice cold, the way folks like it best. Mr. King, have you seen Claudia and David? The roast is ready and they're not back. They'll be back, though, with a gift for you. For me? An armful of secret flowers. But Claudia and I just bought some. Oh, these are homegrown. Much better, she says. You know, your daughter's really quite a sentimental young woman. She has sentiment. It's rather nice. Indeed it is. Though tomorrow it may come between her and a young Bridgeport doctor. Indeed. And uh, the explanation to that will be tomorrow. Till then, so long, Mrs. Brown. Oh, there are Claudia and David now. We are going to spend all evening arranging flowers. Good night, Mr. King. Goodbye, Mrs. Brown. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. These broadcasts are adapted for radio by Manya Starr, and the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.